Welcome to the NVIDIA Omniverse live stream, everybody. Uh, as you can see, we have two awesome people joining me today. We've got Ashley, who just wrapped up her stream a few minutes ago, um, and Richard. Uh, we are going to be going over stuff today, which have uh, been frequently asked on our forums and on the Discord and in email and smoke signals. It's basically, how do you do visual effects in Omniverse? How do you make the most out of your scene uh, with special effects? Um, and it's nice timing because right now, uh, as we'll show about in the announcements, we are doing the seasonal art challenge. Uh, it's in full effect. Um, uh, so if you want to do a cool kind of seasonal theme with some smoke or fire, we'll got you covered today. Um, uh, but I'm really, uh, in our warm up for this, uh, this episode, uh, I got to, to look at some of the stuff Richard's put together and I'm blown away. Uh, first Richard, I didn't know you had, uh, you had experience in these visual effects. So it's pretty cool to see. Um, everyone will be, uh, just as impressed. So, um, uh, we're going to start in just a couple minutes. Um, let me see. Ashley, while I bring up the other, uh, the announcements slide, why don't you tell people what you just wrapped up a second ago if they want to catch that later on YouTube? Yeah. So I started composing a scene using our Sim Ready assets. And I've been doing just little compositions here and there to just be more familiar with creative workflows in Omniverse and how these tools uh, that we're creating can help us accelerate or what tools are needed for these workflows. And uh, what better way to do that than use the Sim Ready assets that we already have available. So I created this little like factory scene um, and just started like throwing in random assets that I feel like are in a factory, but maybe not. There's like a little like skull in there <laughs> and some pumpkins. And uh, I want to run it through the asset validator or the run USD validator and see if we can make sure our scene works with other scenes. Very cool. So that, uh, as always, any of the streams that Ashley does or anyone on the team does on the NVIDIA Omniverse channel uh, exists on our YouTube channel to watch later. So if you go to the NVIDIA Omniverse YouTube channel, just go to the live section and that's where you see all the stuff we've done live. Uh, we broadcast also on Twitch, but all the all this stuff is saved forever on the YouTube channel. Um, and like I just mentioned, we are right in the in the middle of our seasonal art challenge for October. Uh, and so there are some example scenes we have, not only from Jay Selene, who did Spooky House, but also Tanya Langer, who's on our, our stream a couple of weeks ago. Uh, really cool. Um, and so we want to see what you're doing. There's been a lot of really cool stuff been posted over the last couple of weeks since we announced. Um, and uh, one of my favorites actually was just posted on the Discord server uh, yesterday. Uh, Funky Boy, uh, aka Stephen Tong, has been doing, I think he has plans to do four different scenes. He's, I think he showcased two already. Um, yesterday's was uh, a nice Lego uh, from Spider Man 2, Lego scene. Um, he loves his Richard Legos. It's very, very cool. And Richard just taught me something I didn't know that there's no such thing as Legos. It's always That's Lego. Right. Lego. Awesome. Never say Legos. No, they can't you, do it. They can't you do it. Me Lego. It's your embarrassment. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that is in full swing. Uh, we're going to be covering this next slide on upcoming live stream. This is uh, regarding the Run USD tool. Uh, we covered it a, a little while ago when we made the announcement, but now we want to uh, kind of show it off and how it's working and, and answer any, anybody's questions. So we're going to cover this on a future live stream. But just so you know now, uh, you can validate your open USD assets totally for free. Uh, the validation service is called Run USD. Um, and as the slide says, it will ensure USD compatibility for all your applications. So look out for uh, for updated live stream on that. We'll post it to our calendar. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, get in touch with us on the Discord server or on the forums, and we'll help you. Uh, but just be aware that's there. Um, and uh, speaking of OpenUSD, uh, if you're a big Blender user uh, and you have not checked out the Blender, which is available within the Omniverse launcher, it has additional capabilities in there. Um, and uh, for those getting started with OpenUSD, it has some built-in features there to make sure that you can work with multiple apps uh, in your workflow uh, and not lose anything by leveraging OpenUSD. So super excited about all the Blender updates that are happening um, and really um, um, excited actually also, we're, we're gonna be planning a live stream, I think with someone from the Blender team soon. Um, so more news on that soon. Um, the, uh, the most recent installment for Andy uh, and, and uh, Aaron Luck's great uh, USD series that we have on the YouTube channel, the playlist, on the open USD. Uh, the latest one is called custom schemas. Um, really exciting stuff. Um, if you uh, are just diving into USD, that live stream, uh, that uh, series on YouTube is a great way to kind of learn at your own pace, pause, uh, watch it faster. 
um, or slow it down. Um, and you'll learn a lot from, from Aaron's um, multiple videos on this. So it's a great playlist. We'll post those in the chat if you don't have it already. Um, and then finally, last but not least, all of us are super excited and planning is in full swing. Meetings are in full swing over here uh, regarding the in-person GTC experience, which is now back and happening from March 18th to 21 in California. Uh, we're finalizing some sessions now. The GTC page, which is located at nvidia.com slash GTC, is now uh, updated with the latest pricing and early bird pricing on there. Uh, we hope for anyone who can make it out there that you'll attend and let us know so we can set up some meetings uh, and see how we can help you with your work. Um, and for people who can attend, we are planning also to support the event, event as much as we can virtually. Um, so more, we'll have more exciting stuff on that there. But we are planning a nice get together with people who are going to be there. Um, so more news on that um, as the uh, as the day gets closer. Um, but really excited. Um, one thing also I want to share before we get going with today's topic, uh, Adobe Max, if anyone has been involved uh, with Adobe's conference, I want to play a little video that kind of talked about what uh, NVIDIA has been doing there. So let's watch this and we'll be right back. This video is going to show you how you can use Adobe AI tools powered with NVIDIA RTX GPUs to accelerate your workflows. We'll go over an example of how to create and edit 3D materials faster with Adobe Firefly and the Adobe Substance Upscale feature. Starting out, I have this night character I downloaded from Adobe Stock loaded into Substance 3D Painter. I want to create a unique, organic, scale-like look for the breastplate. First, I need a reference image. I could search online for it, but that's time-consuming and it's unlikely that I'll find exactly the look I want. Generative AI can help me create a custom image that I want for my material. With Adobe Firefly, I can quickly generate images of the type of texture I want and use the tags to refine them. And it all runs super fast, thanks to NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud. Now that I've created a base image, I can use Adobe Substance 3D Sampler's AI tool to create my material. The Image to Material AI feature removes the lighting, shadows, and ambient occlusion from the Source 2D image and generates new normal, roughness, and height maps so we can reapply lighting from our 3D scene. The AI acceleration from the RTX GPU in this desktop PC makes this process happen in a matter of seconds. The resulting material looks great, but we can make it better. The new AI-powered upscale feature upscales my Source 1K texture to 4K, giving it more detail. I think we're nearly there, but it would be great if we could preview how my character will look in the final scene before I save the final material. Using NVIDIA Omniverse's connector to Substance 3D Painter, I can preview my material in real time in the final scene. To do this, I use the tools in Substance Painter to further refine the texture, including tiling, metal, corrosion, and dust to get the appearance that I want. Now I have exactly the look I was going for. Very cool. Uh, and I think Amelia's been posting those links with those uh, more information from the Adobe Max in the chat. Um, great to see some, some regulars here in the chat uh, as usual. Thanks for joining us today. All right, so today is super exciting. Like I said earlier, we've had many people in the community ask about how to really make really cool visual effects. Uh, one of the most popular ones, obviously, is fire and smoke. But the other biggie, uh, which a, a lot of people have also asked about, is water. And we are going to cover all of those. Um, let me actually show you this, this quick little uh, scene uh, that Rich is going to get into. Uh, I don't know what order we're doing this yet, uh, because I think we might hit, uh, might hit fire and smoke first. But just to give you something to look forward to later in this live stream, check out this, uh, this scene that Richard just put together yesterday. All right, I don't want to show too much. So, uh, so, so, stay tuned for the whole uh, hour to to get into that because when Richard shared that internally last night, uh, we have a lot of veteran developers here, and they're all like, "Whoa, uh, tell, did you use this? Did you use that?" So, Richard's going to go into how he did that, um, and and we'll go into some uh, also tips and tricks along the way. Great to have Ashley here as usual uh, to give us more of the developer perspective. Um, but Richard, thank you for for coming on, preparing what you're going to show today. 
uh, really exciting stuff. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? People who are kind of meeting you for the first time, who haven't seen the last couple of streams, you've been joining us. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us what your role here is on the NVIDIA team? Yeah, thanks. Um, I've only been uh, doing this for a few weeks, and this uh, this is my first live demo today. So as Ashley could tell you, anything can go wrong, right? Um, you know, I'll go on standby. It's fun to break um, things. I know. I'm 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 trying not to break anything today. No, break everything. Um, I'm the uh, I'm the new uh, Omniverse community uh, manager for, for the forums. Um, I spend my time on the forums, making sure that people get the answers they need. And uh, you know, I try to be the, the the wealth of knowledge I can to anybody that uh, that can find the question on the forum. And then if I don't know the answer, I try to go bother the dev team and say, uh, you know, what's what's the answer to this? So I just try to get people uh, back to work if they get stuck or if they just want to learn new stuff. Well, we are so glad you are, uh, but you've been at NVIDIA for a while. Um, yes. Just join the, uh, the community team. But uh, yeah, so uh, Richard's definitely a, a veteran at NVIDIA and uh, really happy to have him on the community team helping me, uh, folks in the, in the forums and on Discord as well. Um, Ashley, do you want to introduce yourself for people, anyone who might be watching for the first time? Yes, uh, I'm a developer advocate for Omniverse. So basically what my job is, is to help community members get started in Omniverse, do like samples, workshops, live streams, any kind of support they need in order to get them started in their development journey, whether that be programming, visual scripting, creating materials, all that good stuff. Wow, okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, I'm looking at some of the comments now. Um, someone just asked about getting a job using Omniverse. Um, so just unrelated to the topic of today, uh, there's a great platform uh, that we've been chatting to regularly called CG Hero, um, and it's formed by some of the vets from, uh, from TurboSquid. Uh, but it's a really cool uh, cool platform. So for anyone uh, who's not familiar, go to cghero.com. You can read all about it there. But basically, they connect companies that are looking for experts in different areas to bring on to their projects. Um, and as a freelancer or a contractor, as a, as a company that's looking for work, you don't have to pay anything. It's free. Uh, the people who pay are the people who are actually hiring. So uh, so check it out. Um, we'll have a future live stream of the CG Hero team, but I just saw that comment on there um, and thought I would uh, reply to that really quick. Okay. So, yeah, there it is from uh, from wet work. Um, and uh, all right. So, uh, so, Richard, what would you like to dive into first? Uh, you've actually prepared a couple of different things. Um, so what? Yeah. Um, I've got I've got quite a lot of examples. So you know, because it's an exciting topic, uh, you know, having real time effects is is kind of addictive to play with. There's a lot to uh, mess around with, and um, so I'm going to start just very quickly with the scene I showcased I think two weeks ago, which is the Halloween scene, just as a as a general intro, intro into just a little bit of scene setup, a little bit of tips and tricks, and then we'll get into uh, the good stuff with uh, oceans and stuff. Uh, all right, so let me let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, da, 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 da. okay. Let me know if you guys can see that. Okay. Yep, looks spooky. Okay, so I've I've uh, I'm purposely kind of like de-evolved this a little bit just to kind of break it down. This this was my um, Halloween scene. I'm just gonna uh, you know play it through here and. I've purposely kind of set the lighting up to be uh, fairly basic. It's just actually using uh, one of my first tips, which is to use these built-in lighting rigs. So these are these are very useful if you want to just preview a scene in kind of a generic way. So I can just go through and look at my assets in a very clean environment like this. So we've got various lighting rigs, and I, I, I'm sure we're going to be adding more at some point. I tend to use either the default or the, the colored lights. So this way I can get an idea of what the the assets look through as we just scrub through the timeline. This is just a little animation I put together. Now I'm going to switch to the spooky uh, nighttime scene. And obviously what I have here is, is just kind of like a, a single directional moonlight. So I can turn that kind of on and off. And you can see that I've also got some up lights on the statues. And those are just kind of just there to highlight the, uh, the the statues as we pass by. So obviously it doesn't look quite finished. So what I what I tend to do is 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 get a scene set up very roughly, and then I I usually have my my bag of tricks like everybody does. So what I the first thing I do is I kind of go over to FFT Bloom, and this is all in post processing, and then this is all in real time by the way. So I can go ahead and I can 
set that as 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 crazy as I want to get. Um, the default value is one. It usually is a little hot, so I I tend to put down that down to like 0.1 or 0.25 just to give it a little bit of a glow. So that's that. Um, the second thing I I tend to do a lot is this great menu called TV noise and film grain. And I can turn that on, and what it does, it's a little subtle here, but we'll see it more, more later. But if you can tell the difference, it's just adding a little vignette. And you can come down here and turn on vignette on and off. And that just tends to really enhance the brights and then deepens the darks. And it just does a little bit of uh, that framing that you, you see in, in a vignette, just to give it a stylized thing. And actually, the funny thing is for Halloween, there's all kinds of Look, there's all kinds of crazy effects in here, ghost, ghost and distortion and things. And these actually, it's incredible. These work in real time. So as I play the animation, I can, I can actually add these, uh, you know, kind of like scary movie type effects, VCR stuff and all that. But uh, let's not go too crazy today. So I'm going to turn all that off. And then the final thing that I tend to turn on, and everybody that knows my work knows that I'm pretty obsessed with fog. Uh, and and we all, I'm always getting fog questions. So I'm going to show you a little bit of fog. That's the first effect. Now, the funny thing is there is um, a menu in here called uh, Simple Fog, uh, which you would have thought would do exactly what it does. And it does work pretty well. Um, but I tend to recommend the one right below that. And the name is a little misleading. People wouldn't associate that with fog necessarily. So that's the first thing I want to point out. It's called Global Volumetric Effects. And essentially, it is fog. It's just, uh, you know, you can do a lot of amazing things with it. But think of it just like a, a more realistic version with a lot more control. So now I've turned on the fog. You can see it makes a huge difference to the scene. Because what it's doing is, it is it's illuminating the foreground a little bit with fog. And as you get that density, you're also seeing that great background, that spooky kind of fall off into the moonlight. Now. Um, what we can do here is I can actually vary the fog as much as I want, all the way from essentially off, all the way to uh, you can't even find your, your car keys in, one for, in front of you. And it's just a really, really thick fog. Now, and obviously that's wow. personal preference. Yeah. But, you know, that's the great thing about this. I mean, there is no right answer, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this and turn off my, my lights. So just a couple of tips along the way. So Shift L. You don't know shift l turns off your light icons because uh, because they can be annoying in preview i'm going to hit spacebar to play and here we go through and you can see obviously the fog just looks incredible it's wild what a big difference yeah i mean you know 25 years in rendering i've never had the ability to have real-time fog anybody that knows that fog is very render expensive and and virtually impossible to simulate in real time we've managed to to do that. So I'm going to go back that off a little bit. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is a lot of people ask me about getting fog at a particular height. Um, and the simple fog isn't easy to do that, but the this fog, it's great to do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to turn the density back on, um, get it pretty high. And then I'm going to go to my fog height. And usually, look at that. That looks good already. Oh, that's awesome. So now you're getting that kind of like thriller style, uh, you know, Michael Jackson thriller graveyard style there going. And that sets the scene in a completely different way. So what we've done is we just raised, lowered the fog height from 1,000, which is a default value. And another tip, you can see this little blue square. So if you see a blue square, that means that you've, you've, you've taken the number from its default value. And just to reset the default, you can hit the blue square. So we're just going to put it back to 100. And the good news is now we can make that, you know, as crazy as we want to make that. I mean, really, uh, I'm going to maybe lower it down a little bit more. And the great thing about real time is it'll adjust as you fly through. So look at that. So when you're flying through now, you're getting that kind of, uh, you know, on stage smoke machine look. You know, Zia, Zia just asked a great, great question. Um, you have a couple yeah. great questions in the chat. Um, that I was wondering myself. Uh, can the fog move? Like, could you have like a rolling fog, for example? Yes, the there is a way. Um, there is a way to do that with um, a great uh, system called VDBs, um, and a lot of the community will probably be familiar with VDBs. They're volumetric clouds, 
And not only do we support them in the software in real time, but we support them being animated too. Um, that's possibly another video for another time. And I, I, if I get time, we could do it today. But you can actually load in like a rolling VDB. I have things like uh, grenade explosions, fire, fog, uh, rolling dust. So that's how you would do an animated fog. Um, now you do have some density settings here. Um, which you can also do a similar thing. And these could be animated too, to these are uh, kind of like simulate the idea of rolling fog and moving, but you just really have to play around. See how now it's like fading a little bit, but you but you really have to play around with those because they're quite sensitive. So just, just a couple of points either way could change the look and feel, but you can kind of see now how it's, the, how it's pulsing. So that's a way you can kind of animate noise during the fog. Very cool. So does that relate to something simply channeled as a couple minutes ago? Had yeah, that, texture? exactly. Yeah, that, that's a way that's a way to achieve it without using VDBs. All right, so I'm going to move on to another effect here. I'm going to turn off the fog, back it down a bit. And what we can do now is I can go into my fire effect. And I've got this uh, great thing here where I can turn it on and get the fire rolling. So I'm going to unhide everything here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I've got this, the, this fog scene. I've got the, uh, got the, the devil or whatever it is, the, the, uh, the guy coming out of here and I'm going to play the scene. So I'm going to switch to my perspective view and play. And I have no idea why the fire is not playing. There we go. It was playing a second ago, but it's not playing now. But that's fine. That's that's the nature of it. But it's supposed to be in there somewhere. But that's fine. So I'm going to switch to my I'm going to switch to my second demo, and we're actually going to talk about fire. So there you go. Let's uh, get out of that. Perfect. See, actually, things do go wrong. There you go. All right. So. What I've done, I've just switched to a simple scene here where we can see a lot of the real-time effects running. And the way I achieve those, and anybody can use these, is we have a tool here called Flow. And inside Flow, these are just simple setup assets you can drop and drag in. So I've just literally taken these scenes and I've just you know, showcased how these work. Now, notice that these work very fluidly in real-time. They actually work a little bit too in uh, path tracing if you can have the uh, the computing power i've got plenty of computing power so these run perfectly fine in either in either way um and then notice when i when i don't play the the play timeline they disappear and when i play they come back because it's a real time asset but the good news is you can actually take one of these and if i expand these trees you can see that each one has its own tree and inside each one has its own thing called flow simulate i'm going to go through and how i set up those in a minute and i can turn them on so they actually run in real time so now what's cool about this is especially if you're setting up a scene in real time you can move around them and see the effects really like live the effects go in inside them they don't slow down at all, and you don't even need to play the timeline. So that's a way to run the effects independently of the timeline. Um, and we can simply, if I go into, like, say, uh, the fire, I can show you kind of how this works. So we can go into the emitosphere here. And for instance, here's a radius setting. And look, watch what happens when I increase the radius. So just like a standard particle system you've seen in, in other applications, we have various nodes that, that all do their job. And this one is uh, the, the emitosphere. And from here, you can actually just set the, the size. And there's a, there's a million variables here. And I don't pretend to know them all because um, this gets very, very scientific. But for instance, I can like reduce the fuel down. I can increase the fuel and obviously as you would imagine fuel is fire so look at, look at that i can really get it going through the roof um so i'm going to back that down a little bit and you can just mix mix and match all of these effects together so for instance i can just move this fire over here and you see as it moves it's going to start re-simulating i can then go grab my uh, say smoke or steam we'll do dense smoke 
and I can simply um, put that on top and kind of mix and match the effects together. Uh, and you can get some really, really uh, combined amazing effects. So for instance, here is where I'm going to show you uh, a simple scene with a fireplace. Now, I'm also a big fan of Sketchfab and a big fan of the built-in asset store. So we have the NVIDIA assets here, and we also have the asset store here. This is a just a, a basic fireplace scene I got from Sketchfab and just modified it a little bit. And as you can see, it, it came basically without the fire, and I just simply added these in just to kind of enhance the look and show you what, what you can do. And I've just simply got a floor and a, and a, and a, and a wall, and it looks, it looks really convincing. So that would work well in any scene. So any questions on fire from the community? I, Edmar, I you, uh, you, you. you shout them out because I'm, I'm not seeing the full screen. Yeah. I, well, so I'm curious, and this is probably uh, a question that I think uh, Simply had or Zia had. Can we write a shader for a material that would interact with flow? Because I saw there was a temperature setting on yes. the fire. So if I like made a shader that reacted to temperature and then it read the temperature settings of the flow, we could simulate like the wood actually burning. I, I, I haven't tried that, but that, that sounds like that would work. The One of the things you can do in terms of interacting with all the flow is if you go into flow, there are things that are called colliders. So for instance, similar to, to, to the idea of like a dynamic uh, shader, but you can actually turn on the colliders and have objects interfering with that, whether it be water or whether it be uh, smoke. You could, for instance, this is this is kind of a cheat where I've just put the fire in the fireplace. But if I wanted to be super realistic, I could actually then make the fire logs a collider, and that would interfere with the fire, and the fire would kind of flow around the logs. So there That's is wild. there is a lot more advanced features to this. Now you're going to probably have a slight performance here, but this is all done with the Omniverse Warp, um, and it's an amazing set of tools. So now I'm going to show you another tool of the same category. But obviously, we've covered, covered fire. And again, I encourage you just to go to this. I'm going to show you how to get there. If you go down to Window Simulation, there's a great menu here called Presets, which, which is what pops up this. And then if I want some additional uh, smoke, I can just drag it in and drop and add it to any of your scenes. So for instance, here's a scene that I've done recently and this is just a lot of fun again especially uh, for, for spooky halloween i've got this dragon head uh, it's just a head actually it's not the whole dragon but it still looks cool so this is where i'm going to use my lighting rigs again because i don't actually have any lights in the scene so this is a good opportunity just, just just to put it in a in a basic light and the colored light works perfectly for this and when i hit play look at this i get this uh, great dragon fire coming out and um again it's just you know it's it's black magic it's all it's all real time it, it it's incredible like i can i can fly into the fire um so none of this needs to be rendered none of this needs to be calculated it runs in real time and again actually if i go into path tracing um that's actually in path tracing it still runs pretty good but i'm i'm blessed with uh, you know with, with some wonderful nvidia hardware but Can anyway so a movie capture out of that so you don't you don't have to keyframe anything you could just make a movie capture and it would come up exactly yeah yeah i could literally go to here to movie capture and everything there's no cheats here what what you see is what you get WYSIWYG. so if you if you were to capture that you would get exactly what you get um and it just literally dumps the frames to disk and there is no additional rendering. So it's just perfect. Now let me show you an interesting feature of this fire because this one has some uh, some cool properties. So if we go down to um, this thing called velocity, this is where you can set direction because one of the things you'll find is just like particle systems, you can't necessarily scale the emitter. You have a sphere, but you can't, you can't move it and scale it in a traditional object sense. You actually need to tell the flow how to work and, and where to go. So this is this very important thing called velocity. Now watch what happens when I zero this out. So if I if I zero this out, you see how the fire is kind of going up his nose now. Um, 
And so if I zero it out completely, you'll start to see it coming through the top of his head. And that the reason is because I've literally just put it down to the default values. So it's just kind of burning. It's actually a little off. It's just burning off on its own fuel. But what we can do then is don't try to rotate that emitter because it won't work because it's following the laws of gravity and physics. So the best thing to do is simply come down here and force it into the direction that you'd like it to go. So when I pick play, it's going to change direction slightly. There it goes. It's kind of going through them now, and I'm going to bring it down another 10,000. And 10,000 plus 10,000 is a 45-degree angle. So you get this great, like, fire coming out of him. Um, and, you know, for an animation purposes, you can then attach that fire to the dragon head. And, and link them together. So obviously, wherever that dragon was, was going to go, the fire would follow at the right angle. So that's that's just an example of a drag and drop with a sketch fat asset. What if I was to like have like a windy scene and like I put this into a windy scene? Would that would it be able to blow the fire around? Yeah, you could either do it with a separate force, or you can go down to the emitter, and they actually have. A lot of things here for um, you could either you could either manually adjust it. So, for instance, right now it's blowing down at forty-five degrees, and you could just manually then push that fire over. See, with the wind, or you could actually put a wind force in um, to to kind of collide with it and, and interact with it. So that's that's a little bit more advanced. But but all these all these forces and all these warp forces all link together, and you can build an entire a tree of, of uh, you know, real-time technology that all interact and, and physically is physically correct. So that's, you know, you can either do it manually or you can do it with, uh, you know, with colliders and forces. Now, speaking and speaking of, uh, you know, forces, so that's the fire. And I just quickly want to show you this uh, beautiful ocean scene. Let it load up. This, this makes me want to go on vacation. So look, we've got this great, I mean, although this is like a Florida beach day, this is nothing for you and I, actually. So um, we we've wish got it was this, always this calm. Yeah, we wish it was like this, right? So here's this uh, great sky. Um, and oh, another one, another trip I want to just to show you. Um, I tend to, what I call, tear these menus off a lot. So a lot of people don't realize you can do this. For instance, anything you can interact with, you can then drag away and keep as a little uh, interactive box. So for instance, if I want to switch between interactive and I want to switch between real time, I can just have that as a draggable box. Now, the one I use a lot, and I use this constantly, it never leaves my side, is the resolution menu. So it's very, it's very good when you're working. So for instance, if I want to quickly do something and I'm just in low res, I need a lot of performance, I can drop into 720p. If I want to get a little higher, 1080. If I want to go into final frame and go UHD. And then there's an option called viewport right at the top. And viewport just literally runs it one on one in your viewport. So I I tend to use that a lot. Um, for instance, just to just to kind of uh, work either quickly or in high resolution. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drop into 1080p. This this guy can handle it. And then I'm gonna drop into my environment. Now this is with a dynamic sky and again i'm not sure if you're familiar with this but we offer great environments all the way through here all different kinds of interior and exterior and you can actually separate them by type but the first seven have this play button on and these are what we call dynamic skies again it's, it's like it's like magic but you can click on a sky and once you have a dynamic sky there's a little panel here it's kind of hidden right in the corner and from here you can set the time of day. And, and for architects, this is a blessing and, and anybody that's trying to get <clears throat> a particular look. So you can actually see that I can even play this. Look at that. It'll play in real time Great. all the way through the day. Um, and you can set your, your angle. You can even set you know your, your time of day and your month. Look, I've got it set for, weirdly, April 10th, 2023. Don't know why it's set to April 10th, but I can literally go in and set the time of day. Um, and so what we can do now, look at this, this is great. We can actually have the moon rising in real time over the water. So this is a combination of uh, a dynamic real-time sky, a dynamic real-time ocean. And when you put the two together, uh, you get this amazing, just uh, you know, interactive screensaver at best. 
Okay, so now what we can do is have a little fun. And I can then, I've got a pirate ship here. So let me just show you, uh, I'm just gonna switch into my other mode here. I've got a, I've got a great asset here from uh, Kitbash 3D. That's another vendor that you may be uh, familiar with. And they offer a lot of uh, amazing assets in all kinds of DCC applications. So this particular asset is from Kitbash. I brought it into uh, Max 2024 as a V-Ray asset. We support V-Ray fully. And then once it's in Max 2024, you can see the detail. It's absolutely stunning, stunning uh, detail. It makes me want to play around with the scene a lot. We can go up to our Omniverse export toolbar, and we can just export it to an asset. So now I have that uh, installed. I can just uh, run it over here, and I've got it prepared. And here it is. It's called Pirate Ship, unsurprisingly. So I'm just going to open that up. And look how well that, that looks. Um, another quick tip, if you hit F7, F7 on the keyboard, it runs, I hope that's running for you guys okay, but that's running the whole application full screen. So F7 is a quick way to fly around a scene and you just wanna get rid of, of everything else and run the whole scene. So um, now what we can do is then go to my ocean scene and hopefully this, this is a, hopefully this will work. It's, there's never a guarantee. But I should be able to just drag this right in there with the power of USD. Just connect. Oh, look at that. That, 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 didn't, that didn't work too bad, right? So here's my pirate ship in the distance. Um, and when I hit play, now you've got this great little scene. Um, you can see that the rigging's a little bit uh, noisy just because the, the rigging is so ever so tiny. But look, we can we can take that pirate ship scene now. I'm gonna I'm gonna up-res it and we can just go to our world building here, a pirate ship, and we can just move it around and we can find whatever whatever perfect time of day we want. So I'm gonna zoom in, F to zoom in, and here it is on the water. And we can turn off my outline. There we go. And now when I hit play, we can set the perfect, oh, hello, angle of that. Got a little sensitive camera here. I've got to slow it down. There we go. Let's get a little closer. Perfect. Now, just for fun, we can then go into the settings of the water. So I'm going to just go into the uh, the grid deformator, the ocean uh, deformator here. And we can even set the wave amplitude. So look, if I go into a point one. It's a beautiful, calm day out in the ocean. Obviously, zero, you're going to get mirror flat, which you never really get. There's point one. If I go to one, uh, look at that. Now things are really uh, picking up, and you've got some crazy oceans. And this is where you can – I just have to do this. You know, we have to, like, uh, you know, jazz this up a bit so we can, we can do some of our – again, some of our global effects, and we're going to add some, some fog rolling in. Look at that. And we can set our our density, so we can add all kinds of uh, ocean effects. We can turn it from a nice day into a into a stormy day, and we can even change the, the the lighting rig. Look at that! So that's the default lighting rig is really good when you need absolutely flat uh, flat light. Normally it seems boring, but it's not the boring light. It's it's that flat diffuse studio light that you need when you're doing something. You know. Um, very generic and it works great with fog so that's one of my tips if you can use fog start off with something um quite you know quite a generic light and studio and gray work great and you can see the difference between that and the other one and then here's one i prepared earlier as they say and this one is the same exact scene but this time i've kind of upped the quality a little bit i've got it bobbing around in the water so that was kind of fun. This is the one that uh, Edmar showed at the beginning. Are you animating the sailboat or is it reacting to the waves in real time? Great question. Yes, it's it's actually just manually animated in keyframes, but there is the I will be working on one where it will be working in real time physics as a collider and it'll be reacting to the waves. In this yeah. particular case, I mean, yeah, that would be cool. Then you know it's really 
you know, it's really accurate. But if I just go into my uh, animation tool, um, I can show you on the curve editor, then it's just a simple, uh, you know, 100 frame bob up and down. It doesn't, doesn't require much just to get it to look realistic. And when it plays through, it's just rocking ever so slightly forward and back. And it's just enough to give it that. It totally, um, it totally, I mean, it's, it's yeah. not real. It looks, it looks really real. It looks really real. But yeah. when you get to that collider part, I, the reason I'm thinking about it is because, Richard, we live in Florida. Like, we have the seawalls that are constantly being rebuilt all of the time or being pushed back. Or we have all these insurance issues because of, like, the the storm surges that put these houses at risk like what if we could simulate storm surges with real time uh like squares from google maps and like see how storm surges would react to or or affect environments really? that already exist and how what seawalls would do when hit with a certain force of waves like that would be so cool I, I would love to see the colliders actually physically interacting with the assets yeah yeah i can actually um i can actually show you one of those now um our developers have done a great job of providing this kind of content it's not always easy to find but let me show you this real quick actually if you go to wish window and you go down to um simulation was it i just had it warp yeah of course it's warp and then there's a there's a little folder called sample scenes and this is a great way to learn the intricacies of warp. And in here, if I was to drag and drop uh, and open this up, you'll actually see that they have a lot of these, uh, just like you were talking about. Let, let's see if it loads up. Again, I'm doing a live demo. Uh, here we go. This looks good. Now, you'll love, you'll love this, actually. So this is exactly what we're talking about with really advanced uh, stuff. And this this is so accurate that you could use it to simulate things. It's, it's almost like a scientific tool as well. Now, um, let me just set the lighting so it's a bit more dramatic, but the shade is still loading up. But so you can see the, you can see the waves already going. It's actually loading a pretty advanced shader in the background. I kind of did this on the fly, so it's, it's still thinking about it. But let me show you what, what we can do whilst it's still loading from the background. If you ever see this blue bar down here, it's still kind of chugging along. But look, I can grab this ball, and this is what we were talking about. Now, can you see this, Ashley? That is, yeah, that's exactly ding, what ding, I ding, wanted ding. to see. <laughs> look at that. So so that proves that this is not a fake, fake it till you make it kind of situation. This this is the real thing. This, this is actually, as, as I run the ball through the water, this is good for kids to play with, but and me too, because I'm a kid. But look at that. You can actually run it through the water, get crazy there, like a kid in a sandpit, and, and it's reacting in real time. So that that's incredibly powerful. Um, so, yeah, with a bit of work, I could make my ship the collider in the ocean. And as I was to move it around, we're actually going to get um, a real-time effect. Because at the end of the day, what we want to do is not not have to fake anything. Everything is real. Everything is physically accurate and simulated. That's the power of, of the Omniverse platform. And so, yeah, we already had one person talk about, just like you said, um, structures in the ocean. Maybe it's an oil rig. Maybe it's a yacht. Maybe it's a, a seawall. And they don't want it just to sit there and, and just be a dumb asset. They want it to be a real asset. So that's an example. And, and again, all you do is you go in a window, uh, warp and sample scenes, and there's a whole folder full of really um, advanced demos. All right, I've just got one more thing to show you. I don't want to hog too much of the time, but hopefully we can then have some time for questions. So we've got all of that, and then the final one I want to show, we've done a little fire, I've done a little fog, um, done a little ocean. And the last one I want to show you is some really um, extreme fog in terms of lighting, because what I what I love the most about this program is how good the light works. And um, again, it's physically based and, and it even interacts with fog. So this is a, a really old scene. It's actually one of the first scenes I ever played around with years ago, and I just keep up, up resing it. But here's a uh, simple street scene. And look how incredible this looks. Now, this this is I can run it in real time. I'm going to switch to real time here. It doesn't look quite as good in real time because this is really pushing the boundaries of, of density. But you can kind of see that if I just if I just back it off and let it render for a second, 
Um, obviously, this is extreme fog, but let me let me let me roll into this into this light, and I want you to see how how incredible. How did you turn light. the cameras off so quickly? I saw the cameras in view and then go away. That's like the number one thing I hate, and I'm always turning off. Um, you mean? Well, I use a lot of short keys. So, um, are you do you mean how did I switch around a little bit? No, like the camera, like the oh, eye, the, the camera, camera yes. asset the was cameras. in oh, yes. your viewport and you made it go away. I'm always turning those off. Oh, yeah. Kind, like of, that. kind of annoying. They can be kind of annoying. So let me just teach you. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a frog. So there's a couple of great shortcuts. So uh, shift C, shift C is cameras. And shift L is lighting icons. And then you have G for grid, obviously. Don't ask me why it's not Shift G. But yeah, the main one is Shift C for camera icons. Because yeah, a lot of the times, very rarely you want to see them and interact with them, but sometimes they then like get in the way. Now you can turn them off over here, but all of these have their own shortcut. And actually, um, thank you for feeding this in because I want to show you real quick another quick tip, which is the hotkey editor. So a lot of people don't know about this. I like to customize my interface um, to the nth degree. So I can just hit on the keyboard. I can hit one for real time and two for RTX interactive. Now, how do I do that? I go into the hotkey editor and at the right of the top of global, I can just search for whatever I want. Every command, almost every command of the program is in here. So if I search RTX, then here's the command to set the viewport to real time. So I can click on this and I can I can type in any key and it'll just override the previous setting and that works for pretty much most uh, most settings that I could do. So that's a great tip for anybody that really likes to customize their interface and get it working just the way uh, they want it to work. Now, just real quick on this fog, let me show you the power of this. If I was to then grab this tree, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this tree here. Um, and another another short key, I'm going to hit Alt P on the keyboard for perspective. So Alt P is perspective. And then I'm going, hit, I'm going to hit F on the tree to frame it. Although obviously it's in, it's in a lot of fog right now. But what I'm going to do is let me just move in here because I want to, I just want to show you how well this, this fog interacts. So, and let me back off the fog a bit. It's probably get to the point where you know, nobody can see what they're doing. So let me just take it down a little bit here. There we go. That's so now, now just just to show you how powerful fog is. Here's my pretty vanilla kind of, you know, this is my uh, you know typical neighborhood test scene. So without the fog on, it's just a, it's just a generic sky, pretty boring. And then I add the fog, and look, you can set it all the way from I can't see anything at all to just a little bit of hazy. But if I go back to that. And I just drag the the asset around. What's incredible is just the way that you can kind of see. I'm going to turn that outline off so it doesn't ruin the effect. But look look how well the light is interacting with that tree. So you know it, it's um, just to prove that as, as I drag it in, you can kind of see how well that works. So I think that's really all I want to show initially. If anybody has any specific questions we've covered uh, water we've covered fog we've covered fire and and various warp effects i will do a presentation separately on sometime on vdb it's because they they're kind of their own animal um but yeah i think that's uh, that's covering quite a lot so it any questions is. mary well, you've been actually doing a fantastic job of answering the questions nearly as they were being asked i know you didn't realize it but um as you were showing stuff off we're getting questions um and you were you were answering them. Um, uh, you must have some kind of uh, psychic abilities. Um, so let me ask you something. Um, what? Uh, so to take a step back, there are some people probably who have not fooled around with many of these features, um, right. and we may even have some people who have never uh, worked with Omniverse yet. Maybe this is the first live stream. Um, so why don't we kind of explain what NVIDIA Omniverse is really quick and how to enable some of this stuff, uh, because some of this does lie within extensions, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Omniverse is just a great developer's platform. It's all built completely um, from the ground up in Python. And so if you know Python, you can write any uh, custom extension you want. Essentially, we have what we call core files or base files. 
Um, and then everything else on top of that is an extension. So, so literally this, this browser for flow is an extension. Uh, this browser for similarly assets is an extension. And these, these are loaded into a package um, and we, we call that package kit. And uh, we offer two foundation apps. So we offer the main app, which a lot of people are familiar with, which is Composer, USD Composer, it used to be called Create. Uh, and that's what we call our primary foundation app. That's a collection of extensions that allow you to then take content from other DCC tools like Max or Maya, bring in geometry, and, and as the same name suggests, you compose it together into, a, into kind of a final finished scene. And using the power of RTX real time, um, you can then render out either in one of three renderers. So you can render in a fully real-time application. You can render in a, in, a, in a slightly slow but high quality version called path tracing. And for the ultimate of ultimates, we have RTX Accurate, which is extremely powerful rendering technology. It's based on the older IRA technology. It's slower, but um, I know that... Um, People in product rendering really like it because it's it's ultra accurate. Accurate. I I try to tend to do a lot of things in real time because I just find the fun of of, of playing with it in real time and not having to render. Um, so yeah, that, that's the the main core of Kit. And then we have another sister brother application called Presenter, which the two kind of work hand in hand. So the great thing about Presenter is is a literally a way to send the scene to somebody or present it to them without them having to have a lot of technical know-how. Um, so for instance, if you were the uh, the head of VFX artist for a company, you could work in Composer, but you wanted to send it out for review to 10 other people in the company that are not as technical as you, you could you'd send them the link of the file and they can open it in Presenter. And there's a wealth of other extensions here. This is These are all made up of extensions. And if you really want to get deep into, into the heavy ecosystem, we have this amazing window called the Extensions Manager. And uh, you can literally search for thousands of thousands of extensions. I only have maybe 5 or 10% turned on by default. But you can go through here and find community uh, extensions or write your own and turn them on and off as you need. I'll tell you my favorite one now. Maddie save reminder extension. Oh, <laughs> yes. It saved me. It saved me so much today. I, so what has, so is that you learned about that after last week when you yes, uh, launched your <laughs> I learned about it after Monday. Simply uh, messaged me on Discord and we were talking about it. And he's like, wait, Maddie already made one. Because I was like, we should make one. And then it's already there. So I awesome. used it today and it was amazing. That's awesome. there's, a, there's an extension for everything. I would say one of the most powerful ones, if people don't know about it, is we have this thing called Scene Optimizer. Um, this is a little bit like the US, the valid, Validate USD. Um, this is kind of an inter interior version of that, but you can go through and run these very powerful batch commands. So you can like find missing textures. You can you can relink them. You can optimize the scene from a size point of view or an efficiency point of view. So I think that's a, a good little tip. We have this one called USD Paths, which is um, for repassing. So a lot of times, if you want to move a scene around and, and things get lost, you can repass them. Um, and then my top tip is this one here called Collect As. Um, if you're familiar with 3D Studio Max, they have a thing called Archive. This is that version. So if you want to send a file over to your friend and you just want to gather all those resources in one go, all the textures, all the all the JPEGs, all the uh, yeah, external assets. You don't want to go through and manually find all those textures. It takes forever. You can just go to collect as, and it's, you get, it's so easy to use. You just put it in a folder, and you can hit start, and it's just going to suck everything down into one um, beautiful separate folder, and it's going to repath everything to a local reference. So that way you're, you're safe to just send it to a client or send it to a friend, and you know they're not going to be missing any other assets because there's nothing more annoying than getting an asset from a, from somebody and then they're missing all the textures and all and all the references. Yeah, you can do that in the content browser too. If you right click on the USD file, you don't even have to open your USD. That's right. We have I have a lot of a lot of powerful tools here. We now have the validate tool, uh, and we we have a lot of various tools. And this is where you can um, open files in different ways. So you can open the file. You can open the files with payloads disabled. I use this a lot for very, very heavy scenes. So payloads is kind of our version of, of, of the old XREF 
Um, the idea is if you have a very, very enormous scene, let's say an industrial scene, you have multiple warehouses and vehicles and robots, and you want to be able to open it quickly, you can actually disable some of those payloads and make them dynamic. And so when you open without the payroll roles enabled, you can just have a base file and then individually choose what you want to turn on at the time you need it. And when, you, when you're when you done with it, you can go ahead and turn it off. And that way you just kind of worked in with a very efficient memory file. So any uh, any other questions? I think you've been, you've impressed everybody. I think one thing that came up a couple of times during the, the chat is if people can access these scenes, uh, like, can you share them? Um, I know it's some, somewhat depends on the assets you use for different uh, scenes here, but, um, I know that we, I know that we talked about that and I think we could do that because I, I tend to be very cognizant of it. I only use free assets, which are already available for free, um, to anybody that, that has the program. Um, so for instance, like this effects file we could share. I think we could possibly look at bundling these up as, a, as kind of a collection for the live stream because that way we have people can actually learn. So this is a simple, a simple scene. Um, same with the ocean, same with even the graveyard. Um, the, I made the graveyard scene on purpose um, with no other assets that needed any purchase power. So what I would do is I would encourage anybody listening to make a free account on Sketchfab. Um, and technically you can make a free account on TurboSquid as well. Um, and then when you have your account, uh, then a lot of these assets are available to you. Now, of course you can buy them. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I tend to stick with the free assets. That way people don't feel pressured to buy any assets. And there's, there's certainly some amazing assets in here for all kinds of, of dollar amounts. But what I tend to do is if you haven't already done this, I can just search for, for instance, this particular thing here. This is one of the closest I used and I can drag it in and it's completely free. And all, all it requires is a Sketchfab account. So yeah, I think we could probably zip these up and uh, potentially put them on a community feed for people to use. Yeah. All right, so we'll work on that. And for anyone who's not familiar with our Discord server, we actually have great channels there broken down by topic and app. Uh, we actually have one um, focused on live streams. So if you have a question as a follow up to this live stream, you can go to the live stream channel and post it there. We'll see it right away. Oh, my files are working now. There you go. <laughs> it wasn't working before. I don't know. That that was that was my first fail. But it was supposed Maybe to. It was, it was supposed to be doing that. It was supposed to be doing that. Missing some lighter fluid there. Um, yeah. So we do, and then we have a channel called uh, Community Challenges, uh, talking about the one that's on the screen right now that this is uh, related to. Um, so you feel free to jump on there, ask any questions, show you stuff in progress. That's where you can see Funky Boy's latest submission, which, like I said, is uh, is pretty awesome, using Lego for a Spider-Man 2 scene. Um, and let me see. And this just came in hot from my great – I don't nearly credit her enough in these live streams, but Greer is an amazing colleague here who um, – Helps uh, helps to make sure we are um, promoting all the right stuff at the right time. Um, and speaking of which, we just had this blog entry here. I'll post in the chat. Um, this blog entry just went live today, um, and I saw one of the people highlighting this blog is in the chat today. Uh, the captain himself, uh, Daniel Bauer, is his real name. Uh, but you will see some of his work here in this blog entry. Um, we actually. Um, it, People in the community might remember a couple weeks ago, I put a call out there for people using Marmoset um, uh, because Marmoset has had a nice big update um, and there's greater support for OpenUSD. Uh, so you, if you check out the blog, I just pasted in the chat, you'll be able to see some really cool examples there, including from another guest we had on last week, none other than Ask NK. Um, so uh, both those great creators are highlighted in this blog. Really, uh, really great article. Uh, thank you for Greer for... Uh, we're putting the slide together as always and all the slides um, and helping uh, with this blog article as well. Uh, we have a great team here. Work, a lot of people work behind the scenes to put all this stuff together for you. Let us know if you're missing some information or you need additional uh, help with something. We are always uh, here to help. You can leverage the forums where you'll see Richard and other people on the team. Um, pop on the Discord where you can interact with some great community members, uh, including uh, Simply Chenable and, and Z Ideas, who I see are Pe Pekka Varis in the chat. All these folks are very active on the forums, Captain himself. Um, so definitely uh, feel free to come on there and engage with the community. I want to thank Richard. Uh, you have done an amazing job. Um, I'm going to be saving this link and timestamping it because there are. Uh, this is going to cover 
a lot of previous questions that we've had, uh, but also I, I can uh, now I have something to direct people to when people ask in the future for water, fog, fire, uh, and smoke. So uh, you've uh, you've done it all in, in literally just one hour. So not even one hour. Um, do you have any last minute recommendations for people to uh, get some extra help on any of this stuff? No, I just think, like I said, um, you know, you play by learning and you learn by playing. So, you know, get in, get in the software and, and, and get that flow uh, browse and start, start dragging in and, and again, finding interesting assets, especially with Halloween, you know, you've got fireplaces and dragons and smoke and whatever you can, you can find. You just, you just take a static asset that, that needs a little life and you add that flow and you, you suddenly bring it to life, whether it's oceans or fire or smoke and, you know, people mention rain. I mean, there's all kinds of effects in there. And you can build your own. When you get into, uh, I'm not quite savvy with that yet, but that's my my personal challenge to learn how to build these from scratch and, and make really advanced custom stuff. That's great. Uh, as Richard mentioned earlier, um, uh, Omniverse is a, a development platform for you to build on. So you can take apart any of the sample apps like USD Composer and make make it your own. Uh, uh, take out what you need to, or add what you need to. Um, we have some cool people doing really cool stuff in that area. Um, always um, uh, feel free to check out our calendar for the next live streams to make sure a topic uh, that's relevant to you is added to your calendar easily. Um, on next week's live stream, we're actually going to going to be covering Replicator. Um, I put in uh, uh, as a sneak peek. I put in a couple of the titles we're working with right now to give you. Uh, um, a taste of what we're doing, but generally uh, we're going to be covering um, uh, training AI with synthetic data. Um, and we're going to have a great woman from Edge Impulse, Jenny Plunkett, uh, joining us. Uh, so that's going to be Wednesday at the same time. Ashley, thank you so much for coming on back to back. You, you, you're, you're, live, <laughs> you're the new queen of the live stream. You've been uh, the second live stream today. What's your next live stream? You got one right after this? Uh, no, not, <laughs> not today. I'm not filling my day just being on the internet, thankfully, but I'm going to come back on Monday with my learn with me. So it's at one o'clock Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. I want to continue working in the scene that I started Monday and today because um, I want to be able to build it and validate it using the validator and make sure I fix any errors so that someone can take my little cube and if they like it for their factory, they could throw it in their own factory because I'm just making like a little corner of it. So it could be duplicated and added to anything, but I want to make sure that it's ready to do so before I finish it up. That's great. I forget. Did you want to show that off uh, today at all? Or Yeah, yeah. I can just show that really quick and... Yeah. We'll run it through part. the asset validator that's in Omniverse. And, and I uh, apologize for hogging the time. I you know, no, I, mean, I, was so, I, I didn't know the clock, so you know. So engaging. Your all, your stuff was so awesome. So you could have right. taken all of the time. It would have been fine with me. Right. I stopped sharing uh, my screen, so now you can take it away. Here you go. So normally I would use the run USD validation service, but sometimes it can take like two or three minutes, not too long. So I uh, was talking to Maddie. We all miss Maddie so much. So sometimes I'm still bothering him. And uh, he told me about the asset validator that's in the actual Omniverse application. So for one, this is his amazing save reminder. And I could just click save and it would save it, but I'm not going to do that now. Don't forget to save. Yeah. <laughs> Never and this forget. is the scene that I started building. I built this in like 45 minutes. So actually really easy to do That's using great. all sim ready assets. Thank you. Um, I got to work on the materials and stuff. So it, we're almost there. We're far from it, but. Almost. And these are all assets that are in the warehouse package, right? Yeah. So this is, most of these are sim ready. And then if I couldn't find what I wanted in sim ready, I just went to NVIDIA assets and found some stuff like, these are actually the NVIDIA assets. They don't have uh, simulation physics added to it, but it's easy to do. Whereas these things, like the racks and stuff, if I press play, because I grabbed them from the Sim Ready Explorer, they already have physics applied to them. Oh no, I hope I didn't just break it. I shouldn't have pressed play. <laughs> it's it's okay, but it's 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 just running through all those assets and, and essentially applying gravity. So they're just gonna settle there for a little bit. So it may, yeah, it may, it may take a while to chug on that. That's a or lot it's going to crash. Yeah, don't, but, don't do it. But normally it should just sit there and... and. Uh... Oh, we have a great right. question, actually. Oh, uh, oh, oh, you're okay. You made it out. You, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Right, the post one. But look at this question. It just came in, which is, Ashley, uh, uh, you're perfect for this. What makes an asset sim ready? I know you've had Bo on your live streams. You've had him on this one also. Yes. But uh, what, how would you describe a sim ready asset? 
So the sim ready assets, the difference between them and this regular assets is that their meshes are simulation ready. And most, if not all of them in the sim ready explorer already have physics applied. So as you could see, the ones that I pulled out of the sim ready explorer had gravity applied to them. So and colliders, so they'd fell through anything that didn't have colliders or stayed on things that did. Um, I don't think my benches have colliders. So you can, you can see actually, the pumpkins had sim simulation already added to them. And you can turn on the physics cage. So if you go to the little eyeball at the top um, and go into show by type or somewhere around there, there's a physics. There you go. And you should be able to actually see the cages. Go. So so those are the those are the like a like a low res um, shield over the asset that is the thing that actually does the physics colliding detector. So regular assets don't have those. Yeah, as you can see, the one the racks in the back they were not sim ready assets, so they don't have them. So now you just know that if you're using them in a simulation demo uh, or simulation scene, that these are going to work just fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I wanted to just run this through the validator to see so far what I have if it works out well. So uh, Maddie was telling me about this one where you just go into Window, Utilities, and then you go to Asset Validator. You can validate and you can check really anything in your USD scene, um, the schema, the materials, uh, really anything that's in your asset. So I'm just going to click in, enable all to make sure they're all enabled. And then I'm going to click analyze. It didn't, it's going to take a second or two because I've got a lot of assets in here. So the bigger your assets, the longer it's going to take. And as you can see, it showed up red, which means there's a bunch of failures, 647 oh. failures. And I can click down and see what it is. It looks like most of it is having to do with my materials. So there's, this has a material, but doesn't have the material binding API. And I don't even know, I haven't tried this honestly, but I'm wondering if I could just click all of them and fix select it and if they'll fix it for me. In theory. Which would In be theory. nice because I don't even know how to fix the material API thing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know somehow, somehow auto fixes and some just make recommendations it, where it can. And obviously, as it develops, it'll fix more and more automatically. Yeah, but, so a lot um, of them are very basic. They're missing references. They're missing material bindings. And I think this is really important because um, even in like Sketchfab or Turbo Squid, when I'm using some of those free assets and I just pull them in, sometimes they don't work. And I and I'm wondering why. And I think yes. as a 3D artist or or a tool maker for a workflow, I want to make sure whatever I'm building and sending out to others is going to work so that they don't have to go and troubleshoot because they may not even troubleshoot. They may say, you know what, we're just going to find something else. So this is an important tool to have. So I'm going to finish my scene over the next couple of live streams and work on using the asset validator to make sure that I can share this with others and it'll work for them. And that's really it. That's awesome. Uh, I was actually just looking for the uh, paste link in a second for our calendar. So we, if you uh, want to see what's coming up on our future live streams, there are a couple of places you can go. You can go to the community page, uh, uh, nvidia.com slash omnivores um, or omnivore. And uh, that, if you scroll to the bottom, uh, not only we you kind of, you'll pass our, our uh, latest ambassador information section, but you'll see actually upcoming events. And that goes right to our ad event page as well, which is the second place you can go. You can go to our ad event and I'll put that in a link in a second uh, in the chat. Um, and then the uh, third place is if you're on our Discord server, we post the upcoming live streams and the events in the upper left. Uh, so no excuse to miss it, but if you really want to make sure you're not missing them, go ahead and hit that famous bell <laughs> at the bottom of the screen and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Uh, I can never say that with a straight face because. Uh, um, hey guys, it. like and subscribe. Make sure you don't mm -hmm. miss anything on this channel. Comment. Smash that imagine. like button. That's Smash what they that say. Like Sm yeah. My kids' YouTube channel. Smash that like like button. My fun is my favorite is uh, hey guys, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so thank you all for watching today uh we look forward to seeing you on next week's stream uh, starting with um, uh, ashley's on monday and then also be following on on wednesday again um thanks again richard for all the great content you've uh and the tips and tricks you gave today um if you uh, want to hang out i'll go to the community room on discord for a few minutes if anyone's got any follow-up questions and want to chat 
Um, be happy to chat there. Otherwise, we will see you soon. Thanks, everybody.